Oh boy, this takes me back quite a ways. Hi there, folks. I'm Gene of RPG, and uh, welcome to Final Fantasy, the Pixel Remaster version. This was recently, well, I say recently, it's been, what, like a month, two months at the time of this recording? Something like that. At the time I'm recording this, not uploading it. Uh, since this game came, well, not just this one, since all the Pixel Remasters came out. Uh, but the Pixel Remasters first came out on Steam and some other stuff. I think Android and iOS. Uh, I think it's been like two years since they came out. A year, maybe two, something like that. It took their sweet time going, coming to consoles, but uh, they did come to consoles. And it's a pretty glorious time if you're a Final Fantasy fan and you happen to have a Nintendo Switch. Because you can get Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 2, and 12. All on the Nintendo Switch, and, uh, no matter how you slice it, that's pretty spiffy. Anyway, uh, a little bit of trivia. The first Let's Play that I was going to do on this channel ages ago was going to actually be, I think it was the PS1 version of Final Fantasy. Well, uh, I've decided that I do want to do, I want to jump back, do some Final Fantasy stuff, because, well, it's, it's all on the Switch now. Well, not all of it, but most of it is on the Switch, and, uh, well, the Pixel Remasters are the most, uh, the most accessible versions of the Final Fantasy, of the, I guess you could say, classic Final Fantasy series there is now. So, a couple of things to make mention of. Uh, one thing I've always heard about the Pixel Remasters, because I didn't, I haven't played any of them until they came out on the Switch here. One of the things I've always heard, though, regarding them over the last, like, year or two, is that everybody hates the modern text in that it looks bad. And, uh, well, I'm assuming that this is something new since this release, and I'm assuming it's also been patched into other versions. But, uh, we're gonna be changing it to the classic font, which, uh, I personally think looks better. It's just a little thing, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, we're gonna be playing with the classic font, and, uh, I'll get into all the other stuff when we get to it. For now, let's just go ahead and start things up. And so, here we go. In Final Fantasy 1, you don't exactly have main characters. Well, I mean, they are, but they're, they, they have no personality. They're just here. Instead, it's structured a lot more heavily like Dungeons & Dragons, which I'll get into more about that later. For now, let's go over the classes. Over here on the top left, we have the Warrior. Uh, by far the most physically oriented class in the game. Uh, they can equip basically any kind of weapon, any kind of armor. But, uh, yeah, all they're really good for is physical battle, but that's, that's not a, that's not a knock against them, because that's, it's pretty great. Next to that, we have the Thief. Uh, the Thief in previous versions of Final Fantasy 1 really got the shit end of the stick. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, at least in the original version of it, and I believe the Origins version of Final Fantasy 1. Uh, in this version, it's not that bad. I've actually played through the game using a thief in this, in the Pixel Remaster, and it's, it's not that bad. But I think a big part of that is because I'm pretty sure they nerfed the Warrior a little bit. In order, and, and that kind of closed the gap. It could also be the fact that things are not bugged up the wazoo, but I'll get into that another time. Uh, over here we have the White Mage. The White Mage is, well, the, the standard healer class of Final Fantasy. Basically, uh, yeah, they, they use healing spells and support magic for defensive buffing and things like that. Really useful in this version of the game. In the NES release of the game um they're i mean they're okay but uh well again i'll get into that later then we had the black mage uh the black mage uses well black magic offensive magic also some support or rather offensive support spells which are pretty critical and uh in this version and pretty much all the versions except for the nes version they are fantastic 
Uh, in the NES version, they're horribly, horribly, horribly underwhelming. I'd argue maybe even worse than the Thief. Maybe. But you'll note that I haven't talked about two other classes that are here, because, well, the default setup that the game uh, gives you is the Warrior, the Thief, the White Mage, and the Black Mage. Uh, so, the two other classes are the, mon or the Monk, which is another physical-oriented class, uh, their whole shtick is they don't really equip much of anything, and they punch things to death. They're the Fist Fighters, and they're pretty good at it. Another very physical heavy class. The other class here is the Red Mage, which can use both black and white magic, albeit to a slightly, and I mean a very heavy emphasis on slightly, lesser degree than the black and white mage. In the NES re version of uh, Final Fantasy 1, they were by far better than, I think, either the White Mage or the Black Mage. They can equip uh, a fair number of pieces of armor uh, and actually fairly decent weapons. They are the jacks of all trades in this game, and they're fantastic. They're actually my favorite class in the game. All right, and so the team I'm going to be going with, because you can only have four characters uh, in a playthrough, is the Warrior Billy... The Red Mage, Bobby. The White Mage, Betty. And the Black Mage, Ted. <laughs> so yes, these are going to be our Warriors of Light. Our Heroes of Light. Our Crystal Bearers, which I'll get into soon. Now, you should know that once you pick classes, you cannot... And you leave the screen. Uh, those are the classes you're sticking with. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can actually have multiple of the same class. So we could have an all red mage party if we wanted. I don't want to do that for this playthrough. And I actually debated using the thief, but yeah, we're going to go with my favorite class for Bobby. Plus, I mean, look at that red mage, man. Styling. The world lies shrouded in darkness. The winds die. The seas rage. The earth decays. But the people believe in a prophecy, patiently awaiting its fulfillment. When darkness veils the world, four warriors of light shall come. After a long journey, four young travelers did at last appear. And in the hand of each was clutched a crystal. And, uh, yeah. Now, just like that, we're thrown into the game. Uh, and it shows us all the, all the buttons you can press. <laughs> all, what, what all the controls do. All the buttons you can press. Uh, as much as I like that intro, and, I mean, if I remember correctly, it's been a very long time since I played the NES Final Fantasy 1. Although that was the first Final Fantasy I ever played. Um... I don't like it as much as, well, this intro.
That intro is from the 15th anniversary version of Final Fantasy 1 that was released for the PSP and it used to be on Steam and Android and iOS. However, I believe Square uh, Square Enix has delisted it and you can't really get access to it anymore, which is a shame because even though this is the version we're playing and I do think it is a great version of the game, I'd argue the pic, uh, not the pixel, I'd argue the 15th anniversary version is better. But, well, maybe that's just me. Anyway, before we go on, let's go ahead and take a look at the configuration. Uh, I want to change cursor, uh, the cursor memory to on. What this does is makes it to where instead of, instead of every turn, the arrow and the menu going to the top, where it's just going to say attack, it remembers where it was uh, on the previous turn. Confirm auto battle. We'll leave that off for now. We're going to change the default speed to run. <clears throat> uh, we can change to classic or standard for the graphic style. I have absolutely no reason to change it to classic because that just kind of puts this weird filter. There's the font style, which we already went over. There is also the BGM type. So the Pixel Remasters used an arranged version, used an arranged version of the soundtrack, but they all have the option to switch to the original soundtrack. Which is very much an NES, uh, NES sound. We'll leave it on this for a little bit, just a little bit, because, uh, well, because of something I want to talk about. Hi there, this is Cornelia, the City of Dreams. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently we're filthy. Hi there. Hi there, I'm a dancer. What's that? You want to dance with me? <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, sure, why not? Hi. Actually, I don't want to talk to you yet. It's a well. It looks like you could climb inside, but you can't. Really. <laughs> uh. Anyway, this here's a weapon shop, as indicated by the sword that we saw. Something to make mention of in this version, and actually uh, quite a few versions of them, of this game. Uh, the cost for equipment is drastically reduced. Uh, from what it was. Also, your characters start with some equipment, which did not happen originally. And uh, I'm actually very much glad that they reduced the cost in here. This version of Final Fantasy 1 is based pretty heavily off the easy version of the Final Fantasy Origins uh, version of Final Fantasy 1. And I'll get more into that as the game keeps going. I want to keep things flowing a little bit here. Hi there. Over here is the armor store, as was indicated by the shield. I thought it was a shirt for a second, but no, no, I'm thinking of a later Final Fantasy. Uh, I purchased two rapiers, and uh, I want to purchase two chainmails. And then that's it for armor and weapons. That's all we're going to need to buy, as far as those go, for a while. This is the black magic shop, as indicated by the black... I think it's supposed to be a staff head with some kind of an effect around it. That or else something with wings. Anyway, that's the symbol for black magic. And, uh, yes, we have to purchase spells for characters. Once again, prices for these things have been dramatically reduced. Uh, if I remember correctly, in the NES version of the game, I want to say they were... They were 200? 200 gil apiece? Now they're 50, which is still a little up there, but... Eh. Anyway, I want to get fire for Ted and fire for Bobby. And that's it for now. Then I want to go over to the white magic shop, which is right here, obviously. And uh, there are definitely more spells that I would like to purchase here than uh, there are black magic spells, but for now we're just going to get cure one for Bobby because he can get both white and black magic and one for Betty. And then we have 150 gil left over, so I want to actually go to the item shop, which is this with the tea kettle, I'm guessing is what it is. And, uh, well, if you're familiar with the NES version, you're going to notice an immediate difference. There's way more to buy <laughs> as far as items go in this version of Final Fantasy 1 
than in the NES version. Or the hard mode version, or I guess original mode, of the Origins game. Anyway, we're not going to worry about that too much for now. Right now, we're just going to buy three potions. Okay, now obviously, like many RPGs, just buying the stuff doesn't do you any good. you got to equip it. So let's go ahead and put the rapier on. Higher attack power. Accuracy drops a tiny bit, but that do that's not going to matter. And then I want to put the chainmail on to Billy because it's got great defense at 15. And his evasion drops a little bit, but again, that, that doesn't really matter. Bobby, because he's a red mage, can also equip a rapier, which is great, which means he can do relatively close to the same type of damage for physical damage as Billy. And he can also equip a chainmail, which means more defense. Unfortunately, our white mage and our black mage, Betty and Ted, uh, they cannot equip chainmail or leather armor for that matter, so they're stuck wearing clothes. Just regular old clothes. Betty's stuck using a staff. I could buy a hammer for her. But it's such a minimal difference, I don't really care. And uh, I'd rather put the knife onto Ted because 9% accuracy is much better than the 3 or the 5 <laughs> that they have. Not that it matters that much, but they will be having to use physical attacks for at least a little while. Alright, with that though, I think we're pretty well set up. Let's go ahead and talk to a guard. Let's talk to you. The king truly believes in Lucan's prophecy that the warriors of light will come to save the princess. Oh, okay, I guess it's not any guard. I could have sworn it was. Well, I know for a fact that if we talk to this guard, uh, he tells us they're searching for the warriors of light and the, the crystals. We have to go and see the king at once because we have the crystals, not the orbs, the crystals. <laughs> in the NES version of Final Fantasy 1, it was orbs and not crystals. Welcome, travelers. I'm told you carry crystals. Is this true? Yeah, see? Look how shiny they are. It's just as Lucan's prophecy foretold. When darkness veils the world, four warriors of light shall come. Hmm. Her Majesty, we cannot be certain that these are the warriors foretold by the prophecy. Yet they stand before us with the crystals. I cannot dismiss this as mere coincidence. Crystal bearers, there is a task I would ask of you. Will you rescue my daughter, Sarah? Garland, a knight once in his majesty's service has abducted Princess Sarah. I ask you for your aid in the name of his majesty, the King of Cornelia. Garland has taken refuge in the Chaos Shrine, which lies to our north. Of course, we did attempt to save the princess ourselves. But Garland is one of the finest swordsmen in the kingdom. We have none who can match him. I have heard that you wish to travel to the continent to our north. We, we do? The bridge leading north was lost long ago, making passage impossible. Okay, never mind us. How did you all survive without that bridge? If you can rescue Sarah, I will have the bridge rebuilt as a token of my gratitude. Go now, warriors of light, and do not fail me! Uh, right! Right! No, really. They, th without that bridge, we, we'll see... Uh, it'll be next part. But we'll see that they have absolutely no way of contacting the rest of the world. They have no boats. <laughs> they have a they have a port, but they have no boats. They're they're isolated here. It's very perplexing. Anyway, let's explore Castle Cornelia real quick. I say real quick because it's not very big. Our reports say yeah, we know. Our reports say that the the Garland fled to the north with Princess Sarah. Uh, this is a, an NES game at it. I mean, at its... Jeez, it's the first Final Fantasy game. And here is another princess. My sister, sister, I, well, uh, my sister, sister. Okay, uh, I don't remember what her name is. She has a name in other versions of the game, but I don't remember what it is. And it's, honestly, it doesn't matter. 
Her majesty is overcome with grief. She shut herself inside her chambers. Please, try not to disturb her. Oh, that's quitter talk. Let's go talk to her. I am Jane, Queen of Cornelia. Please, please bring my daughter, my Sarah, back to me safely. And uh, I forget if there was an invisible person in this castle or if it was another one in uh, the NES version. It's been so long since I played the NES version of Final Fantasy 1. I, I do like Final Fantasy 1, though. Uh, there is more to explore for the castle, so I suppose we can go ahead and do that. I'm acting as though there's a strict time limit for these parts, but th there's not. But I do want to keep things moving because... Well, here's the thing. And you're going to notice it as I talk to several care several NPCs throughout the game. There's not that much in the way of additional dialogue by from NPCs. Although this guy does tell us something that we'll want to remember later. And uh, that they they <laughs> their ancestors locked weapons and useful things inside these doors. And then gave the key to the Elf King, who they no longer have contact with. So they have these locked doors that they can't get into. That are full of very useful things. And yes, this guy says the exact same thing as this person over here. Dialogue from NPCs is... Pretty... Repetitive. But there's some gems here and there. And I'll do my best to show things off. But anywho, that is it for the first part of Final Fantasy 1. Next time, we're actually going to get things started, and by that, I mean we're going to go to the Chaos Shrine. I'm Gene of RPG, I'll see you guys then.